the Honorable Member for Churchill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is an honour to stand in this House and, uh, and uh, bring forward the voices of uh, people in northern Manitoba, uh, along with our NDP team, to stand up for the workers that, have, that build our communities and have built our country. But I also feel that standing in this House, in a way I'm also living history. As a 28-year-old uh, young woman who was born and grew up in Canada, I'm seeing the Canada that I grew up to believe in fade away. A Canada where people have enjoyed one of the best qualities of life, the best health care, some of the best education, some of the safest workplaces, some of the most stable futures. And yet, with this kind of legislation, that Canada is being chipped away. That Canada is being chipped away because the people that have built it, the working people of Canada, are having their rights rolled back. Number one, the right to collective bargaining. And that's all that the postal workers, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, has asked for. To go through what is a, an enshrined right, to go through a process that working Canadians go through in many workplaces, to say, this isn't fair or times are changing, things are getting more expensive, there's more challenges up ahead. Let's find ways so that our wages, so that our benefits, so that our pensions are in line with, with the Canada that's moving forward. And instead of having a partner with whom they could negotiate, they were locked out. And when that partner locked them out, just a few days later, the government, who has control over a Crown Corporation, came around and didn't just agree with what was, what was uh, presented by Canada Post. They, they went even further. They proposed wages that were lower than the ones that Canada Post, the employer, proposed to the very employees of Canada Post. And with this legislation in front of us here today, they've also gone further in silencing the very people who hold up our communities, the very people who are asking for nothing less than dignity and fairness. But that Canada is also facing fading away because there is specific attack on my generation. On my generation because it's my generation that will have a double standard in the kinds of pensions that are proposed as a result of Canada Post program. And these are the kinds of pensions that have already been taken away largely in the private sector. I come from a proud mining community with Valet, a foreign-owned company, has put out the workers, our brothers and sisters in Sudbury, for over a year because they were asking for a proper pension, a defined benefit pension, so that they know that their money, their deferred wages, aren't going into a black hole that's being played with by the markets that, who, whom we've seen cause great havoc with people's savings, but that they're locked up somewhere secure because that is their money. That is our money. And now we're seeing a new page. We're seeing a crown corporation, which is controlled by government, take that same very approach and say that because you are young and because you are new, of which most are young, you don't deserve the wages of those, the pensions of those that have gone before you. Shame. And what will, in that, what will result from that? It will result in a generation, my generation, being less well off than our parents. And that isn't just in an individual sense, it's in the kind of communities that we live in. I think of my community in Thompson, one of the youngest regions in Canada, Rhonda, who delivers my mail, Jen, a good friend of mine, Ian, another good friend of mine. They're people that, like all of us, want to buy a home, want to build a family, maybe buy a vehicle, maybe once in a while get a holiday from a place like ours, which is one of, which is one of the coldest in Canada. But they know they won't be able to make the same plans as their co-workers that are nearing retirement or their parents that have retired. 
And that double standard also applies to people that live in parts of the country like the ones I live in, rural areas. And much has been said about the challenges that people in rural areas face. And I really wonder how so many of the members across, elected from the same region of Canada in which I was elected, representing rural areas like the ones that I was elected from, how they can stand here and say it's okay with what Canada Post has been doing. Because not only has there been an attack on generally in terms of working people, but the kinds of allocations in terms of funding that Canada Post has made has far prioritized urban centers rather than investing in rural areas where the postal service isn't a luxury. It is absolutely integral in not just communications and entrepreneurship, but communications between people. Most recently, Canada Post took care of the food mail program that makes sure that some of the poorest people in our country, Aboriginal people in regions, the ones that I live in, the one, the one that I represent, regions that are isolated so that they could access healthy foods. And now that's been taken away. Much was said about the $2 billion that Canada Post committed to the modernization project. And I saw a fancy PowerPoint presentation about the new vehicles people would get. Those don't work in places where I come from. But what I do know from people like Barb and Lorna and Bertha, who I talked to in Flim Flon today, is that the permanent workers that are retiring are leaving empty spots that are not being filled up. That there is an increasing hiring of casual workers. And when they bring forward challenges that they're facing with rural postal delivery, Canada Post is reticent to respond to those concerns. So the hypocrisy in having a government that claims to stand for rural Canada or Western Canada, that claims to stand for the future, leaves not just rural areas behind with this legislation, but also begins the chipping away of the foundations that would help hold up my generation. And this kind of approach isn't just singular here in Canada Post. And we've heard about the, that very question, who's going to be next? What about those institutions where we all belong, where we all come together to find, find ways for all of us to be better off? The Canadian Wheat Board is another one. And in, the single desk marketer of a very important product that comes out of, uh, that comes out of my, my part of Canada. What about our other crown corporations? Which one will be attacked next? We already know their funding has been challenged, been, has been cut. But how about the, the workers that work for these crown corporations? But it doesn't have to be this way. Our party, the official opposition, our leader put forward the very statement that it doesn't have to be this way. What we ask from the government is to take to get Canada Post to take that lock off the door, to allow the two parties to come to the table and to find a resolution in terms of the, the challenges that workers are facing on the ground and to recognize that these workers are the people that hold up our communities. And these workers are raising families. They're going to grow up, and, and they're raising children, pardon me, that are going to grow up in a world that is going to be increasingly more challenging. And what is the role of government, but nothing else than to stand up for its people? And that's why our fight today is not just for the workers of Canada Post, but for every worker in Canada and every Canadian that deserves the dignity in a country as wealthy as ours. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.